There's a lot of tags on this spot, huh? COVID hit 2019. We left Alaska. And we have not been back. We showed up this year in March. And we found out that the native village of Metlaketla, the some of their fishermen. Well, the village is right over that mountain on the other side. Fishermen had accidents and they didn't come home. There's an 80 percent unemployment on that island. There were families left behind with no help. We called our buddies from Alaska, Washington, California, Oregon. Send us your used buoy tags, you guys. And we put them in the front of the boat, right through that door. There's a box and a slot in the top, and there's pins. And these are our memories from our guests earlier this year. It's a donation thing. If you put something in the box, grab a tag. Maybe you want to write a memory of somebody. Maybe somebody that's just inspired you throughout your life. That's what these are. At the end of September, we're going to cut the web of this pot out. We're going to roll it up. It'll be that big. Take two of us to pack it. We're going to fly over to the village. We're going to invite the chief, tribal council, members of the community into that big room. And we're going to lay your memories out on the floor and get down to read them. And then we're going to give them a check for the very first memorial fund that they've ever had for the fishermen's families left behind when there's an accident. Over the last four years, thank you. Look who I found! I'm so excited. Hi, I'm Matthew. And I'm Susan. Together we love to travel. One of our favorite places to be is aboard a Norwegian ship at sea. Good food, drinks, and friends make a relaxing trip indeed. So come along with us as we let the sea set us free. came out here in April. Prior to the tour season, before any cruise ships came to catch camp, we rolled up into this bay and we all climbed on top of this trap pot, all of us. We're all up here. We're putting our memories on this crab pot. Our little greenhorns from Ketchikan, they came out, they sat over here and they wrote their memories down. We zip tied them to this pot. As I stepped off of this crab pot, I thought back about my buddies that never came home. I got to 34 of them. 34, they call that TV show that up at the bow of the boat on the wall, there's a memorial for one of my buddies that fished on my boat, Steve Diva. He always smiled. Steve was one of those guys that would have always had that upbeat personality. And one day we had an accident on one of my boats. I wasn't there that day, but uh, I walk into that battle all the time. And I know Steve's right with us here today on this boat, okay? The Memorial Park. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, As Dave throws his line up there, you'll notice there's a couple different colors of line. It just happens to be that that's two different kinds of line. Yep. Uh, what he's going to throw on there first is a floating line. And we always put floating line next to the pot. The reason is we want that line to float up and away so it doesn't chafe on this iron or go into the tunnels and, and foul things up. We just want that line up and away from that pot. But when we get to the buoys, we want sinking line on that. And the reason is, we want that line to come as straight down as possible. So when boats drive by, they're not, there's not a bunch of loose line for them to catch in their wheel or, or, or us when we're running the gear. It's just, it's just what we do with all, all of our stationary gear. Okay, right. you guys, are you ready? Yes, yep. we are. Here we go. Let her go. Going over.
actually call them something different as fishermen. We call them the slimy oil. Because here's the deal. You get one of these things in a five-gallon bucket of water and agitate that bucket, one of these creatures can exude several quarts of gooey slime out of the pores of their body. That's its defensive mechanism. And if you've seen the alien movies, when he opens his mouth and he got those big tendrils of goo, that's what we're talking about right there, you guys. Now, the, uh, the slime meal is a long line fishing industry, and it's not because we're going to have to go very deep, but it's because anytime we can connect more gear to our line, we're gonna do that so we can go through more gear each time we pull it. We're gonna pull up a 35 gallon plastic barrel. They're used like a pickle barrel, all right? We'll punch a bunch of holes in it, put a one-way entrance in with fingers that let nothing come back out. We weight that thing down, we put bait in there, and those slime meals love a dark hole to get into, like a barrel like that. Now, we've been doing pretty good. Typically, we catch about 75 each time. We got about 100 people on board, maybe a little bit more. There's enough for everybody to hold one. We might have to take turns. I'll show you how to do it. You just don't want to shake them, because that'll agitate them and they won't give out that slime. Hopefully that second movie is going to come out. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm looking you're good, for yeah. it. I, I get it regardless. It's out. Nice. If you Google the next words, Oregon, highway, slime eel. <laughs> Doesn't sound like those that go together, does it? They were shipping these things down I-5 between Washington and Oregon. There was an accident. A bunch fell out of totes onto the highway. Ooh. They had to shut the highway down for four hours because that slime was so sticky just to clean it up. And if you look at that article, there's a little compact car in the background that looks like it's been straight out of a Ghostbusters movie. There's slime from front to back. You can't even tell what kind of car it is. Plus, there's two state troopers who look like they wish they had called it sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> that was in their job description. Yes. Put him, <laughs> if we were to put him 
in a tank and he inked and we left him in that tank, he would expire from his own toxin. Usually it's just enough to get away. I'm gonna sex this guy real quick, see if it's a boy or a girl. You go right through the mantle, through the middle, you cut three suction cups over. And if it comes down to, if there's suction cups all the way down, it's a female, and if not, it's a male. This one's Hank. <laughs> Hank in the tank. Okay, everybody get a picture of that guy? Yeah. All right. Back into the, into the timeout barrel. We catch about 50 or 60 a year, a summer. So it's just a few days at a time that we have to get in there, okay? That's a secret hole right there. That's where, yeah, if any of you need a timeout, <laughs> Did you put anybody in there with them? I give a little sleep over, buddy. Oh, okay. It's dark and cold in there. Yeah. Prawns like to keep him occupied. The prawns never come back with any compliments about the show, but... <laughs> Okay, you guys, you ready? Sure. We are. Let it go. Anchor's over. All right, you guys. Giant Ooh. Pacific octopus right there. I, get you. I, go, I encourage you to Google that creature, and also there's a documentary on Netflix. It's not the giant Pacific octopus, but it's a relative. My octopus teacher. The guy goes out diving with this octopus. And he chronicles that daily for a year, kind of puts it together. It's a cool show, okay? Now, I hate to inform you, but we're done with the fishing portion of our journey on this side of the deck. I know, it's very sad. I know, I know. But listen, we're highly trained professionals. We do this a lot. We've been looking in your eyes. You guys are famished. This is as long as you've been away from the buffet on this whole cruise. <laughs> <laughs> we know, we've cruised. Hey. But the gals have been putting together a little seafood snack for the way back to town. Let's hear it for the gals, too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We still have some of that king crab back there. The spring, halibut, herring, and black eye. You're gonna be gone eight, nine, ten months a year. You're gonna miss birthdays, Christmas, anniversaries, all those things that a dad and a husband should be a part of, right? It's difficult. I ended up giving up crabbing after two years. Right here. She was older, she didn't have any hair left, but we know what's going on. But her husband, he grabbed a hold of us up here. This is before we left the dock. He says, you boys need to know this. With my wife and I, we saved our... Did you all have fun? Oh, yeah. I love it. It was excellent. The eagle thing was like a feast in my life. I would totally do that again. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> Even though I've done it once, I'd do it again. <laughs> hey, I've done it twice and I would do it again. <laughs> His ears red and his cheeks red, which is an indication of stinginess. Now, that totem pole can be taken back down if his family actually reciprocates. But I've heard rumors over the years that what they gave him in today's market would be around a million and a half dollars. Yeah. Funny story about this house here. My okay, it's time to go. Board the spirit. Okay, getting ready to board the ship. They're kind of stopping us and only letting a limited number go at a time. That's not to overwhelm the security people. Well, we just got back to our stateroom and the dreaded paperwork that we always hate to see is on the bed. Boo! Lunch here at Windows today and appetizers have arrived. I got the Nikoi salad and Matthew got the Caprice salad. For main course, each of us got the chicken parmesan. And for dessert, each of us got the peanut butter cheesecake. Okay, so lunch was really good, um, but we're gonna head up to Trace Maria's room and play some LCR. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Here, Here we go. <laughs> oh, gosh. Set her enough. Mm, one sentence. <laughs> no bad, Matthew, no bad. No good either, but. <laughs> Could be better, but I'm, I'm okay with that. So we had a lot of fun playing LCR and then spades with Trace and Maria. Although I don't think Trace is going to play LCR with us <laughs> anymore because I just <laughs> took him for his always once again. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, but yeah. yeah. Um, and we had fun playing spades. Um, <laughs> Maria and Susan are learning. Yes. When you go, when your partner goes nil, you up your bet. And you don't lead with a two of spades. <laughs> like he said, I'm still learning. Two of spades. And she broke my nail. <laughs> she had an ace. TBC. A king. A queen. <laughs> and a jack. TB TBC. To be continued tomorrow. <laughs> she broke my nail with a two. <laughs> so we are going to get ready for dinner. And pictures before dinners at Cagney's again, which should be really good. And comedy afterwards. Yep, it, it should be fun. Of course, you're coming with us. Yes. Would you doubt us? Come on. I, I see the doubt in your eye. <laughs>